We're not breaking. I think we have to say now that we have another speaker immediately. The lights are going to go down so you can't see who it is. But he's going to be coming out, I think, now. Can we get our next speaker on us, on us? My name is Anas Arimiyawa Nas. I'm an undercover journalist from Ghana. I have gone undercover to play many roles. I've gone undercover as a patient in a psychiatric hospital. I've gone undercover in prisons. I've been a pastor in an orphanage, a doctor, a lawyer, and so many roles. But this is the key question I ask myself anytime I go undercover. How do you use your piece of journalism to empower your people? Now, I do three things in the kind of journalism I do. Some of you may not be used to this, but I do what I do to make the right impact in the community I come from. I name, shame, and jail the bad guys. I'm a product of my society. And when you talk about the African continent, you are asking yourself that question, that how do I do this story to make a meaningful impact in the lives of the people down there? I know that some are going to find it very weird. Why should I say I jail? What I mean exactly is that when I go undercover and I collect my video evidence, I go to the court of law together with the prosecutors. First of all, I collaborate with state security agencies who have the powers of arrest. And when these bad guys are arrested, I go to the court of law and testify against them and people get jailed. This is not common, but I do it because of the impact it has on my society. Look, before I embark on any, on any journalistic mission, I ask myself, how is it going to benefit my grandmother in the village of Africa? For them, the problems that are there are problems. And journalism is not about just telling them the story to read and understand. It's about making the right impact in their lives. So there is no point in doing journalism which doesn't progress society. So my grandma would want to ask, would want to find out that this story you are doing, what has been the immediate impact on my life? So if you do journalism, that ends up empowering the bad guys walking on the streets. It doesn't work. People want to see real change in their lives. So I did a story on the Chinese sex mafia, which ended up with the people I testified in court and the people got jailed for 45 years. I did the Ricardo cocaine case as we speak. They are in jail for eight years. I've done the cocoa smuggling story. They are in jail for 16 years. And I'm talking about many other kinds of journalism, kinds of work that I have done, which has ended up putting those bad guys in jail. So if I say you're a bad guy, I show you when you planned to commit the crime that you, you committed, how you committed it, and when it was committed. This is what I sent to the law courts, together with the prosecutors, and I have people jailed. This is not a speech. I think we should do this by illustrating it with some of the videos. If you could go ahead and play the video, it's, it's much better, so that it becomes more conversational. The video. Even as we prepare to play the video, I do recall that deformed or with disabilities as evil spirits. In three weeks of investigation, I've already met 14 individuals who admitted they'd killed spirit children before. Ten of these said they were willing to poison my child. This is the Soothsayer Shrine. As dawn breaks the next morning, the police arrive and pack a safe distance from the house. 
it's time to bring in our dummy child and place it on a makeshift bed in the secret camera room. While the area crime officer and his two remaining colleagues sit in the monitoring room, from here they will keep patient vigil and be ready to move in. We make our way into the bedroom where they demand I hand over the child. They still don't know it's a replica. Thanks. Let's move. So what you just saw, a little pause, what you just saw was a community in my country where children who were born with deformities were given concoctions and killed. This, has, this child infanticide had gone on for so many years and people were very happy doing it. One of the speakers you just saw had told me that he killed over 400 children and many of them kept on being killed. For me, how do I impact on this society of mine? So I went undercover with that prosthetic baby. And as soon as they prepared the concoction, and they were about to feed that prosthetic baby because they thought it was a child who was born of deformity, I pounced in with the police, and they were arrested. As we speak, they are languishing in the police cells. Please proceed with the next video. Since 2008, Tanzania counted 62 albinos who were killed, 16 who had limbs amputated, and the bodies of 12 albinos were exhumed. It's the start of our undercover investigation and it's time to get involved myself. I sat, this made the contact of a watch doctor who is suspected of being involved in the albino trade. I posed as a customer who wants to become rich. He continues to have an hour talking about curses, black magic, and the need of special medicine to boost my luck and success. That's it. It's time to scare him with my arm. Tell him I brought him a present. Yes. <laughs> pause. Pause. So what you saw was the spell of albino. And as you know, many albinos are being killed in Tanzania and many other African countries for ritual purposes. Now, how do you break the myth surrounding all this? First of all, people living in society don't even believe that these soothsayers and witch doctors who talk about these things are fake. So again, I went undercover in Tanzania together with my team. We filmed the hardcore evidence. And as we speak, this man is currently languishing in jail in Tanzania. But the key thing that I keep asking myself, why would I do what I do? I do it because of a simple reason. Our institutions we have are not strong enough. So some of these cases or issues, are not, we are not able to deal with it with the requisite action that we are supposed to deal with it. So that's why I see nothing wrong. When I know very well that, look, our democracy is just about 50 years, and we can never compare our democracy to that of the West, which is over 500, 400 years. We are a mushrooming democracy. There will be problems. But it still doesn't mean that we are not human beings. In as much as some of you may not like my method, I tell you it works. And I'm able to put smiles in the faces of people. Please proceed with the next video. My anonymity is my secret weapon. And this time, I am using it against a new enemy, gold scammers. You're dealing with criminals. You can't predict what they will do. We were first taken to a national bank, where we were told the rest of the gold will be deposited for safekeeping. A later checkup at the bank's head office revealed that they offer no such facility to receive or store gold. To bust these people today, we would have to take the risk of going with them. They had told us to leave the money at our hotel, and only after the gold had been weighed would Patrick return with Bilal to receive payment. Meanwhile, Bilal and Patrick left to collect the payment. It was crunch time. Charlie, come, come down from the car. Come, come. Come down. And so our investigation came to a successful conclusion. Pause. So when we go around looking for investment, people to invest in our country, and they come and fraudsters try to defraud them, 
is not only an affront to the image of our various countries in Africa. It is also a pain to the poor villages, poor people who do not have hospitals, who such investment would have benefited. So this was one such mission to catch these frosters and then put them behind bars. As we speak, they are behind bars as we speak. Next video, please. International aid agencies donate millions of dollars of food aid to Ghana every year. It's meant to keep malnourished children alive. The people who are stealing and selling this food are the very ones whose job it is to make sure hungry children get enough to eat. A man in one of the major towns in the north, Navrongo, was selling boxes of donated food. Inside his house, a huge supply of food aid ready for sale. It was time to bring in the police. Out of those arrested, only the nutrition officer was ultimately charged. The others were helpers and didn't know the goods had been stolen. As you can see, they are malnourished children and people suffering from HIV AIDS. And still the bad guys will get at these people. The little food that is being given by donor agencies to keep them alive is still being stolen. And so I go undercover. Like I said, some of you may disagree with me, but I can tell you, I'm a product of my society and I'm doing what works. Maybe it's not going to work in London or Berlin or anywhere else, but I tell you, my people are smiling at my kind of journalism because it works. Please proceed. Nigeria's fake physicians are taking a heavy toll on unsuspecting patients. Two African journalists go deep undercover into the disturbing world of quack doctors. It's time to go undercover. One fake doctor, Dickin Austin Owl, to sing here in the car is getting away with an outrageous calm. But Anna's plans to give him a dose of his own medicine. I'm going to that place and pick him. Anna sketches out his plan. The police take up station outside the clinic. Inside, Iguodala carries out his bogus examination, he heads to the back room, presumably to pick up his dirty syringe. Terrified, Anas lifts up the bed and follows him. The police force him to wear his stethoscope to publicly shame him as a fake doctor. Say you are a doctor, put it in your neck. Put it in your neck. That was, that was fake doctors in Nigeria who were busted for the crimes that they committed. But the next slide you are just going to see is about people selling babies. And many of these babies were sold from time to time in Nigeria. Please join me in watching this. In this episode, Anas Aremiao Anas and Rosemary Rabuni investigate the Nigerian conmen promising to cure infertility and the maternity clinics selling babies for cash. Today, I've come here to meet my colleague, Rosemary Uwabuni, for us to try and uncover a baby selling syndicate. We have made an appointment with one such medic, Mr. Akimbode Demilola. He operates from a pharmacy in Delta State. He has all the trappings of a medical doctor, but alas, none of the qualifications. The doctor examines each of us behind the curtain. He uses a mysterious little device, the size of a smartphone, which he holds in his hand and waves over our stomachs. Within minutes, he is satisfied with the examination and hides the device in his pocket. He also diagnoses me with pelvic inflammatory disease, an infection of the female reproductive organs. In 2012, child rights activist and lawyer James Ibo suddenly found himself dealing with human trafficking. For the past uh, one year, we recorded over 20 children disappearing in parts of our state. We don't know if they were adopted because there's no record of adoption. The woman said that she's going to take me to refuge home, that she would take care of me and she will give me everything that I want. Then, when I deliver, that she's going to take the child from me. 
and sometimes they sold the baby out. We wanted to find out if babies are still being taken by the illegal baby trade. We are going undercover, posing as a married couple, desperate for a child. Here at Destiny's Child Orphanage in Ulapo, we are amazed to discover how openly one employee would offer to sell us a baby. So in the money, instantly brings smiles onto their faces. Young girls, you know, have been torn into baby-making machines. After paying to register, we got a call the next day from the woman at Destiny Child Home to tell us they had found a baby for us. Hello, madam. Good morning. That is ending of this month or December. But it's not just the staff at some orphanages who sell babies. A wider network is said to exist, operating behind a front of trained doctors in real clinics. Instead of all these children being wasted and abused, and the people that are looking for children will come and adopt them. Even Christ was adopted by Joseph. On our third attempt, we finally got to meet the boss. Dr. O'Hari himself. Look, as soon as possible. Several days later, a second nurse from Basic Clinic called to tell us a baby was coming up for sale. One woman is at labor now, so they are watching out. Maybe, I don't know whether it is a girl or a boy, but the for now, to keep 900,000 naira. We were not able to care for a stranger's child ourselves. So we backed out of the deal. Our investigation has shown a light on part of a sinister network. It involves genuine doctors and cynical staff in orphanages who will sell vulnerable children to the highest payer. Okay, uh, you prepare a hidden camera for me. journalists like Anas who, who risked his life to report the truth. Anas is a big name in our country. But when journalists begin to play James Bond, it's troubling. Now from the second paragraph we move to the neck of the story. And the neck must be nothing but the facts. <laughs> Shit! Now, what you see here is me in disguise. What you see here is me dressed as a sheik. What you see here is me disguised as a rock. Journalism is a weapon. It's an asset. It's a means to an end. I'm in handcuffs with him right now. <laughs> yes, we are in handcuffs. <laughs> Exciting. Biggest undercover sting in the history of Africa and the extraordinary man who carried it off. Doesn't matter who you are, wherever you are hiding, I come with my cameras. Some of the most trusted people in the land allegedly took bribes and betrayed their public duty. Even if it's one judge who sells justice, justice sold is the most dangerous commodity on earth. Al Jazeera has been recording what happened. At the end of the investigations, we got 34 judges. Huh? 34, yes. Ajit Sam is one of Ghana's most senior judges, sitting in the High Court and dealing with the most important cases. Gabriel played the middleman's role. He would lead us to the judge. Of course, as you can see, we give him his share. Not much, but he takes it. After two years undercover, Anas and his Tiger Eye investigative team went public in September. The decision would provoke huge controversy, death threats, and a sometimes uncomfortable spotlight on their own methods. 
In Tamale, northern Ghana, and NASA's investigators went to see if they could influence the outcome of a rape case. It was an appeal hearing. This is Ansuji Abo. Ansuji Abo is a well-respected High Court judge. The judge is anxious nobody should know that he accepted the cash. I beg you, and sit down. Let this thing remain this way. Okay, my lord, okay. Anas's team take a traditional gift, bags of yams and more. So, the investigation you just saw is my latest. It was done two years, and it was worked into the judiciary of Ghana. And at the end of the day, we found 34 judges caught in corruption and 164 judicial staff also caught taking money to tilt the scale of justice. It took two years to make it happen, but it's worth it. Today it's brought a lot of smiles on the faces of people. You see, the judiciary is the backbone of every country, and I'm not specifically referring to Ghana, I'm talking about Nigeria and many other African countries. So I found this investigation to be one of the most strongest that we have done. There is more in the pipeline that we are doing. But like I've said earlier, you may not be happy with the kind of journalism I practice, the naming, shaming, and jailing. But I can tell you, the results are palpable. We are changing a lot of lives, and we are making the needed impact. Thank you very much.